Hello and welcome to Radical Living. I'm your host, Shoeless Joe, and today we are talking about the top 10 things to not have at your wedding. Now, obviously, the most minimalist wedding would be to just not have a ceremony at all. Just sign a piece of paper and be done with it. This video is for people who want to have a more traditional wedding ceremony, but they don't want to have necessarily all the extra thrills and frills that go along with it. Maybe you're just trying to save on money, or maybe you prefer simplicity over migraines. I became a minimalist after I got married five years ago, so looking back, there's just a few things that I would like to change. Both my wife and I have strong Catholic families, so a traditional ceremony was definitely a must. There are a few things I think we could have done without, and here they are. Number 10. Paper invitations. The thing here in these parts, you not only mail out invitations to the wedding like a couple months before, but to also mail out save the dates like a year in advance. This is, seems completely pointless to me. Instead of mailing out save the dates, Aaron and I just did them on Facebook. It made so much more sense and saved us a lot of time and money. So much so that looking back, I wish we had just done all of the invitations on Facebook. If you use email, Facebook, texting, all that kind of stuff, you can hit most people. Yeah, you might still have a few older people who don't use any of that kind of You can just mail their invitations to them. This will save you so much money on postage and so much time because you won't have to pick out the letterhead and, you know, mail it all out and all that junk. Number nine. The garter and bouquet toss. It's also a thing here in these parts for the groom to ceremoniously, I guess, take a garter off of his new bride's and fling it out into a group group of men will then scramble for it to figure out who is going to be the next one to get married. And then the bride takes her bouquet and throws them behind her, and then all of the women scramble to see which of them will be the next one to get married. Aaron and I did this at our wedding, and my sister just got married, and at her wedding reception, they just didn't do those things. And it was awesome. Anything you can cut out of your reception to devote more time to the dance floor, I am for. And the thing is, I didn't even notice. It wasn't until afterwards when I was looking back, I thought, hey, we never did those things. It's not not like I care, it's not like they really matter that much. As a side note, a cool alternative if you still like it but don't want to do the whole weird creepy garter thing, that some Christians will instead have the groom wash his wife's feet just like Jesus did for the apostles at the Last Supper and I think that's awesome. Number 8, Cutting of the Cake. Speaking of devoting more time to the dance floor, what the heck is the point of having like a ceremonious cutting of the cake? It's just cake, you're gonna put it in your mouth and poop it out later. When everyone crowds around you, no one can even see, and half the time no one even knows it's happening, and it's like the stupidest, most, like, just pointless thing. Number seven, the cocktail hour. Apparently there's this thing where people have cocktail hours. We didn't do this at our wedding. After the ceremony, before the reception, in that in-between time, you have, like, a cocktail hour where people have cocktails and, like, eat some food, little tidbits, and some serious. Like, oh, we just get to the big party with all the food and drinks, but I don't have to pay for and spend time worrying about a little mini party with food and drinks. Number six, party favors. Party favors are these, like, little trinkety things that you give to your guests to take home with them. Maybe personalized M&Ms, or cups, little bells. How about you do everyone in your party a favor and not give them crap that they're just gonna get rid of later or clutter up their home, okay? Number five, the lim lim limo. Your limos are fun to ride around in, but really to pay to rent the limo, then you have to like pay the limo driver, then you have to like tip. This one wedding I was in, we didn't really have cash on hand to tip the limo driver. We didn't think about it because we had already paid for the limo and the limo driver. And he's all like expecting this tip, and the best man was like scrambling to give him whatever cash he had, and it wasn't as much as he wanted, and so he was all like, My sister's wedding, the wedding party was small enough that all of the groomsmen, we just rode around in the bed of a truck. It was fine, and it didn't cost money. Number four, dishes. I say go disposable. It's either going to take forever for you to wash all the dishes, or it's going to take all this money for you to pay someone to wash the dishes. We just did our food buffet style, so it was a lot cheaper. I think we used disposable dishes. I'm not really sure, and I guess that's kind of the whole point. Like, people aren't going to remember the dishes you use. You want to focus on what they're going to remember. They're going to remember the dance floor, they're going to remember you saying your vows. They're not going to remember all these little, little itty bitty in-between things that you're going to be wasting all this time and energy and money on. Some of you might be thinking that it's not very green to you. You can look into recycling options. You need to focus on what matters to you and what fits within your budget. Number three, flowers. Now, if I were to get married again, I would not be able to win this fight. 
white with Erin because she loves flowers. Maybe you don't care that much about flowers, so I would just suggest that you rethink it because flowers are expensive. You can look at maybe scaling down, like I've heard of the bride having just one flower instead of a bouquet. I think all of our bridesmaids had bouquets, but then we used those bouquets for the centerpieces at the reception, so it was like double duty. Number two, a photographer. At our wedding, we had a really good friend from college doing our pictures, so we got a great deal and she did really good work. I've always been against using photographers and I always will be. The thing of it is, technology has come to the point where you can easily just whip out your phone and snap a few pics just as good as any photographer. Okay, well maybe not just as good, but good enough. While you're at it, cut down on the amount of pictures that you take. At my wedding, I spent all this time taking pictures with every like possible combination of people. Okay, just the guys. Now just the girls. Now everyone from his family. Now everyone from her family. Now just the immediate family. Okay, now just your immediate family. What about the dog? Do we need the dog in this picture? It was madness. It was crazy and it took forever. As far as I'm concerned, all you need is one or two shots. You just take one of just the couple and then like just the couple and a bunch of other people. And then move on to the party. It's all about the party, people. And number one, the biggest and bestest thing you can get rid of from your wedding is... Tuxes! Matching, matching tuxes and suits for all of the boys and girls. Well, mo mostly just boys. I don't know what it's like where you're from, but here where I am, everyone is expected to be matching if they're part of the wedding party. All the bridesmaids get matching dresses, and all the groomsmen get matching suits or tuxes. Why, you might ask? I don't know. Uniformity? Aesthetics? People don't like having money? It's so rude if you ask me to just say, Hey, do you want to be in my wedding party? You want to be my best man? You want to be an usher at my wedding? And then when they're like, yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. They're all like, hand over $200. You can't ask someone to be a part of this with you and then just demand all this money from them because they have to match everyone else. First of all, it costs money. And second of all, uniformity is just lame. If you want everyone looking kind of dressy and kind of the same, here's what you do. You just tell the groomsmen, hey, you guys need to be in black dress pants, black shoes, white dress shirt, and I will provide you with a tie. That way we'll all match. Most people already have those kind of clothing items, and if they don't, they can easily get them secondhand or borrow them from a relative. That way it's cheap and or free, and everyone's happy. I've seen some people say that the point of the wedding and the focus of it is all on the bride and groom and you shouldn't worry what other people want or what other people think about your wedding ceremony because it's all about the bride and groom and it's not about any of them. This could not be farther from the truth. The point of having a big party and a big ceremony is the community. You are promising yourselves to each other before all of these people as witnesses. They're going to be witness to your union. It is about the people. It is about them. This party is for them as well as you. You need to reconsider what matters to them and what matters to you and try to balance them. If everyone at your reception is going to be super disappointed that you don't do a bouquet cut toss because it's like their favorite part, go ahead, do a bouquet toss. It's not going to hurt anyone. But if you're struggling financially to make things happen, you shouldn't have to go into debt just to please a few people. That's my number one advice to you is not to go into debt for your wedding. If you can't afford to throw a party, you don't have to throw a party. I've been to a wedding reception before that the entire thing was just potluck, which means Everyone coming to the party brought a dish so that the bride and groom didn't have to pay for any of the food. I think it was just a friend who was DJing for free. It makes me so sad to hear that people are not getting married because they can't afford it right now. Can't afford what? A wedding is just two people promising themselves to each other. What you can't afford is to keep postponing it for financial reasons when you're in love. It doesn't mean I'm condoning just running off and getting married on the fly, but if you know you're meant to be and money is the only thing holding you back, don't let it. Don't let other people's expectations of what this should be keep you from being happy. At my wedding, we had an open bar, and my step-parents... Step-parents? Mother-in-law and father-in-law paid for the alcohol. We didn't have a cash bar, we didn't make people pay. Obviously, this was expensive, and if you can't afford it, you shouldn't do it. An open bar, to me, is really important because I'm all about facilitating the party. I'm about the dance floor, about the good stuff. That's the thing, you have to decide what's important to you. That was an unnecessary extra cost that I was happy for them to pay for. Even though a cash bar or no bar at all would have been much more cost effective. 
But what about you? What are some things that you regret at your wedding or some things that you plan to do for your wedding if you haven't had one yet or think you might have another one in the future? Thank you so much for watching. Remember, keep it simple, crush it and everything, and stay radical. in your white dress. We ain't get no youngest, we might as well do it.